So it's, uh, it's great to be here. Um, my name is Matthew Radcliffe, uh, M. Radcliffe on Drupal.org. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I was first introduced to the PostgreSQL database management system with PostgreSQL 8. Um, a little distracting, sorry. I've been around the community for several years. Um, you may have seen me around at some Drupal cons in North America. I was at Munich, but I generally kind of keep to myself. Um, so I was first introduced with uh, PostgreSQL in 8 and uh, doing an ERP migration from Oracle 8 in 2007. I, it really influenced me uh, at that point as to start taking into consideration other database management systems. And so in, when I approached the Drupal module development, I tried my best to support as many database management systems as possible. I consider myself a hobbyist contributor when it comes to PG SQL and PostgreSQL. Um, I'm not a database administrator, uh, but I've learned a lot just uh, with uh, hacking on core over the years. It is my first time to speak at a large conference. Uh, I don't often get up to speak. I prefer to kind of sit back in the background and code. Uh, but this, uh, this discussion needed to be had again, so uh, here we go. I'll try my best. Uh, this session, this core conversation, is going to um, go as follows. We'll briefly review the past. Um, I'll say briefly because we don't really want to get hung up on, on the past situations. And then detail what the current situation is with the PG SQL driver uh, for people who want to work on things now. And, uh, and so go over the issues. And then we'll look at reviewing options for removing from core. And, uh, and then finally, uh, at that point, I'd like to open up the conversation to looking at the future of PostgreSQL and database abstraction in, in uh, future Drupal versions. Uh, here we are again. Uh, this isn't really the first time we've had this discussion. Uh, over the years, we've, you know, PostgreSQL has been, has worked on and off again. People have, it's not, it, it doesn't satisfy the 80-20 argument of, of whether, of, of users. Um, so the majority of users use a, a MySQL or MySQL-like uh, database management system. We have bugs in Drupal 7, and some people consider them critical bugs enough to just not use PostgreSQL. Um, right now, unless someone has made a commit in the last hour, PostgreSQL driver is completely broken in Drupal 8. Uh, so yeah, just it's a no-go. You, you can't use it. Uh, so the question is, should we continue to support PostgreSQL? Um, and, and why should we support it if, if we are going to support it? And this kind of leads into database abstraction um, uh, in general. And database abstraction is a, is a challenge. It's hard to get right. I'm not sure if there is any framework out there that implements database, database abstraction, a database abstraction layer, perfectly. Um, and it, it's a challenge not just with databases, but with platforms in general. Um, and programming languages, standardized libraries, frameworks, they're all complicated uh, s systems. They all have uh, uh, issues um, that need to be solved. And the cost to port or maintain you know, platforms and standardized libraries and database systems is, is pretty high. Um, sorry, I say I'm a lot. <laughs> so a framework's database abstraction layer makes it possible for us as developers to choose a suitable database to use for applications. And each SQL implementation, as we know, is uniquely powerful and implements the SQL standard in a certain way. And and so many, but many database abstraction layers only implement the most common concepts. And so this is the first problem. It's the, I call it the common denominator problem in that we often see uh, database abstraction layers going for that, that database agnostic approach. And this leads to the first criticism of database abstraction layers in general uh, being that they're no good. Um, many people not many, but 
I, I jokingly say that database abstraction layers has made some people very angry and has been widely regarded as a bad move. Uh, but in defense of database abstraction layers, uh, we, you know, it's not just about the, you know, whether you support one system or another. You have code reuse and other benefits uh, to, to using a database um, abstraction layer. And so the common denominator or the database ad agnostic approach is just one way of implementing. Uh, back in 2006, I believe, we have uh, the, the four types of database abstraction layers that uh, was defined uh, by in, a, in a blog post. Uh, one is just providing access to a database. Uh, two is providing a common interface to different software. Three is actually writing portable code so that you know you can you can make that intelligent choice. And four is just uh, is the object relational ma mapping or ORM, ORM. Uh, so in our case, I would consider Drupal still uh, type two in that our code isn't portable in all cases, and where it is implemented. Um, the, speci the specifications are pretty in just in general. You know, we've gone with that database ag agnostic approach. Um, Rails Active Record, um, you know, implements a, an ORM. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, uh, Doctrine's DBL also implements an ORM. So the the next issue with database abstraction layers is that. And, and this is very particular to Drupal, is that frameworks implement them for a completely different reason than we implement them. You know, if you think about architecture and as a developer, and you, you're, you're coming up with a, a solution to a problem from the ground up, you're gonna make those architectural decisions when developing and then choose the best tool for the job. And so abstraction layers present in frameworks are really f suited for that purpose. Um, there's but when you deal with uh, Drupal, which it comes out of the box, we have to think about, you know, we've basically we're forced into thinking of things in a database agnostic approach. And so our architectural decisions are probably different than um, what you would get with uh, Doctrine or Rails as a framework. And finally, the, the third challenge of database abstraction is, of course, business value. Um, is there value in having support for uh, different systems? The primary value is code reuse, and it saves time uh, to use a database abstraction layer in, in most cases. But you know, some customers want the best they can get from a system. So it, when they're evaluating a system, they're gonna say, well, Drupal may have performance issues because it's using a database agnostic approach, and thus maybe I should just go with a custom solution. Um, and for this reason, we see uh, more, more rec most recently Backdrop has dropped support for both PostgreSQL and SQLite, and they were considering getting rid of uh, what database abstraction layer they, they had in core. And, in, in, and basically they evaluated it as such. It did not have enough business value. So with that in mind, I kind of, you know, as I researched the, and, and I've been looking at PostgreSQL Dryer for, for a couple of years, I've developed my kind of my criteria for keeping PostgreSQL in core or not, uh, or, or removing it. And that is, we should remove PostgreSQL Driver support from core if it provides small value to, to the Drupal community, and if it is given low priority to fix critical and architectural issues with the storage interface. Um, and I think, you know, what I'll do is I'll approach this, you know, both of these these things throughout the next slides. But first, let's take a kind of a, a look at the past. And uh, I guess Holly isn't here, but I hope she's listening and she'll watch this later. So, what what is PostgreSQL? If you're if you are unaware, it is an ancient, strict, free, open source relational database management system. It's been around for decades. It follows strict typing and standards adherence as only an open source database management system would do. And it's free and open source. So 
It's, um, it's got the PostgreSQL open source license, which is um, managed by the PostgreSQL development group. So it's, it's pure open source software. Uh, MariaDB is probably the only other one other than SQLite um, being in the public domain. So we first got PostgreSQL in Drupal 4. And, and this was, of course, if, you, if you're not aware of what we were doing back then, you know, we just basically had, okay, you can, you can do queries, <laughs> right? Uh, and then in, in this involved over, the time, over time, so in Drupal 6, we got the schema API, so we could then you know, provide a generic type for column management and table management. And then finally in Drupal 7, we, you know, we, we got that, the next step in database abstraction with the dbtng and a, a real abstraction layer. And so PostgreSQL's use, use has evolved over time. You know, you know, there was high hopes back in, in Drupal 4 and Drupal 5 that we would start, you know, we, we'd start increasing the user base of Drupal to include uh, PostgreSQL users. But in, in my mind, it really has evolved into basically a litmus test for whether an alternative database system can be used with Drupal. And that's pretty much the reason it's still in core. And I'm gonna say that that test has consistently failed. We know that PostgreSQL is broken, um, or our driver is broken. Um, you know, you're gonna say we failed, you know. Uh, why did we fail? Um, well, for one, PostgreSQL is strict, and so, if you only test against a database system with uh, you know, loose adoptions of, of standards, you're gonna run into things like the autocomplete bug. And this is, was present for a while in Drupal 8. If you would go to user slash autocomplete, it would load the access callback um, for user slash percent user. So the, the user access callback, which would then try and do a user load on the string autocomplete. This is garbage. We should not be trying to, to load a user with a, with a string, identified by a string, if that database schema says it should be an integer. Um, so this was a bug in, in menu get item, or in the menu routing system somewhere. I believe it's no longer the case in, in Drupal 8. And, but in our defense, uh, we have lacked the tools such as automated testing to discover these failures and fix them. So it's really, you know, we failed, but, you know, we, we really didn't give it a chance. So it, it's kind of depressing, you know, we failed, whatever. Um, the current state of, of Drupal, uh, of the Drupal database abstraction layer, is it's pretty much almost a straight port from Drupal 7. Um, we've added some, some, some methods on classes. We've brought views into core, which um, deals heavily with, with querying databases. And then finally, we've, the only other change is we've abstracted storage in the way we're handling schema management um, away from the database drivers and into systems like cache and config and entities and field storage. And with these things, we get to how, uh, PG SQL is implementing, implementing them, and, and, the, and the way it's implementing them is poorly. Um, so really, we can boil that down to kind of one decision um, in the last couple of years, and that was issue 1167144. And it is not a bad decision. You know, we decided that, and the, and the crux of this issue was, okay, we have a cache system, and we don't necessarily want to always have a storage storage for that cache system. In fact, why would we want to create database tables for cache if we're not going to use the database for cache? So the what what happens in, in, in the cache database backend is it it will try and delete and query for for the cache and if it receives an exception, it will then um, try and see if it can create the table and if it's if we're using the database backend. And we're doing this in a transaction. So the, uh, the, the main issue there is that PostgreSQL will just roll back and stop. 
and whereas MySQL or Oracle should will do implicit commits. Um, a couple other issues with our storage system is um, more, more, more recently, this was fixed for PostgreSQL, but there's a, a follow-up bug for SQL Server. Is we have the content entity database storage class, and so we. And this is another good thing. We we have removed uh, Drupal write record, and that was doing. You know, we've deprecated that. I'm not sure if it's actually removed, but it's deprecated, and so this had a lot of logic for how to handle uh, serial fields in in Drupal. So we basically. If you remember Drupal write record, you, you send it in an object, just a standard class object. And what would happen is we would just unset call, um, properties and then send that to the database. So this is kind of like, you know, it's not great. You know, we want to use an entity uh, and, and call save on it and then have that go to wherever storage is, is necessary, either config and, and, and the config storage system or into the content entity storage system. And, uh, and so we're not handling serial fields properly. And in, in SQL Server, and to digress, basically, if you do an update in SQL Server, you cannot you put the primary keys and try and set the values of primary keys. And so that, that actually was, we found that um, the, the new SQL Serve module maintainer has you know, found that out um, just last week, so we created an issue for that. Uh, so the, the other thing is we currently don't have a, an official testing infrastructure for, for PostgreSQL um, in, on qa.drupal.org. So anything we're doing is, is untested. Um, I'll get to that in a moment. It's not quite untested. Uh, anything that the rest of Core is doing is untested. Um, and also, you know, we're, we're missing functionality. Because we have, because we have a broken driver... <laughs> You know, we, we, we're lacking things that are really cool that Postgres users want, and that's uh, schema support. You know, we only support the public schema. Uh, we don't support a JSON type. We, we, there's cool things in Postgres like PostGIS, and you know, we don't support that. Um, one of the reasons why you might want a schema other than public is to reduce your vulnerability for PCI compliance. Um, and just to if you're really stickler for, for how you want permissions to be set up for applications accessing a database. Um, to, to remark on the testing infrastructure, we were making really good progress last year. Um, you know, Jeremy Thorson over there uh, had the goal to provide test, you know, we had this goal to provide testing infrastructure for platforms, languages, and database systems. So not just PostgreSQL and SQLite, but also testing against PHP 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, .5, and you know who knows other other platforms, uh, operating systems, and so really you know after some good progress we you know running into difficulties because our testing infrastructure um, from Drupal 7 just wasn't going to cut it, so that kind of morphed into the goal of let's just rearchitect our testing infrastructure. Um, a little work was lost, but. Um, and so we had to start over for PostgreSQL. And I think within the last three months since Austin, um, is that three months, <laughs> four months, um, we've, uh, we've really made some, some strides there for being able to handle uh, different database systems in, and, and platforms and spin things up. Uh, so uh, kind of an exciting realm of things is, yes, you can help. Um, even if you have never used PostgreSQL or SQLite before, um, just uh, for you know, last uh, little straw poll here. Raise your hand if you have ever participated in a core sprint. Also, if you had, if you have not raised your hand, I highly suggest that you come on Friday. If you need any help whatsoever, uh, your core mentors, you know, we're happy to help out. Um, raise your hand if you have worked on PostgreSQL or SQLite or in an alternative driver at a core sprint. So uh, five people. And um, I was going to include this next little question, but I, uh, that I think uh, that we'd get the same number of hands. Uh, but up until yesterday, I had never worked on a driver issue with anybody else in the same room. <laughs> it can be a little depressing when you're, only, you're the only one working on drivers um, just, just because there are other issues going on, other movements that have more momentum. 
So um, one of the things is if you've never installed Postgres SQL or SQLite, do it. You know, get it on your development environment. I think any anyone who's working with core, sh especially if, if you're reviewing things, should have have these drivers, have database systems set up on their development environment. And it used to be kind of difficult. You know, I don't, you know, who knows how to set up Postgres SQL here? Uh, a lot of people, okay. <laughs> well, um, that's not, not a really good poll, but a lot of people don't. You know, that's their complaint. I don't know Postgres SQL. So uh, uh, to make it easy for you and for people who don't know how to, to do it, I, I've, you know, we have Vagrant, we have Puppet, we have, we have methods of solving that problem. It's solved now in the last couple of years, thanks to the DevOps movement. So I have an environment if, if you want to use it. It's Debian-based, um, you know, whatever. I'm not a Debian fan particularly, but you know, that's kind of what I, I forked off of someone else's uh, um, Drupal 8 dev environment. So with that said, um, we have one meta issue about supporting Postgres SQL. And uh, so that's that heading up there. And a couple of issues. The first one uh, is just briefly, um, our index key length is too long. So if you try and create a field that has a really long name, by default, Drupal is going to use the, the field name as the key. And um, so in Postgres SQL, it's limited to 63 characters. And so if you have a really long name, it's going to do, try and use, it's going to truncate it and try and, and possibly um, try and use an index that already, already exists and you're going to get an error. So there's a patch for that, uh, probably needs to be reviewed. I think that, that, yeah, the patch actually needs work. We discovered yesterday, doesn't pass our tests. Uh, the next issue, which is now in green, needs to be committed is our transaction handling. Uh, but this could, you know, if, if we wanted to start thinking about the future of storage, there, there are follow-ups for this. And the transaction ha handling is all about handling the, the faking out and handling implicit commits in Postgres SQL. So what, what the patch does is it wraps all queries um, that are in a transaction in a save point to emulate the behavior of MySQL. Um, might be a little performance issues on this, but I haven't really noticed too much on on recent versions of Postgres. Um, our current status is RTBC, unless someone's committing it right now. <laughs> they would do that, wouldn't they? Um, and, and the reason is, so this is our, our current blocker. If you have this patch, um, our, the Postgres SQL test bot that Ricardo Amaro is, has, has up on his personal site will reveal that we have 208 other exceptions going on instead of not being able to find any. So, so this issue really is, is the, the first thing to solve. Um, you know, other issues that are important, you know, our case sensitivity on column names. Um, and again, these are some of the issues that are in the, in the meta. Uh, the next one would be the, 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 uh, the goal of providing test bots for everyone on the new infrastructure. So that's really important. So it's not related to Postgres, uh, but you know, I, as I was making this, you know, editing these slides, I noticed that, that we were going to have sprints related to the test bot infrastructure and the goal of getting it all set up this week. So um, you should probably learn more about that at Jeremy and Ricardo's session tomorrow at 1045, Modernizing the Test Bot, Feature of Drupal.org Automated Testing. Uh, Finally, you know, feature-wise, if you want to work on non-public schemas, there's an issue for that. Um, another issue that slipped by is is all the other drivers, and I think I think SQLite did this. Maybe they they have a dummy one, um, but the other drivers in core implemented the copy table method, and this was not done in the Postgres SQL driver for whatever reason. The there is no reason to use copy table in core. And so I think CHX has um, said that we possibly could remove it. But, I mean, it, Contrib might want to use it. Um, so there might be a valid reason just to implement it in Postgres. Uh, finally, um, the file list view in Drupal 8 is broken because of an ambiguous column. And this is 
not uh, to do with the file system, but more to do with views. So there's, um, there's an issue going on deep within views and on, on what it's doing, group by. And it has to do with file managed and file usage, if I recall correctly. So this is, uh, this is kind of exciting. You know, we, we have, we're on the brink of just having PostgreSQL work for the most part um, and being, having it testable. Uh, so let's talk about the not so distant future of Drupal 8 and beyond. And I think we should ask ourselves is, should we continue to use PostgreSQL as a litmus test for Drupal's database abstraction layer and supporting alternative drivers in Drupal? And if, it, if we do want to re have it remaining core, can we actually prioritize uh, our driver, alternative drivers so they're not having to play catch up? But um, first, let's, let's look at just what it would take to remove Postgres from core and, and maybe you know, remo you know, moving it to contrib. So one of the things that you know, is a problem with Drupal is you know, we're, we have that database agnostic approach. So we, we haven't optimized our architecture for MySQL and MySQL-like drivers. Um, we have PHP things in, in, in our code. We're working around PHP quirks, um, like null and default being different in PostgreSQL. Um, we could be using MySQL-specific features. We could remove the hacks that are increasing our code complexity that we've added over the years. And finally, we could just start analyzing all our queries to see what we can do better for MySQL and MySQL-like, uh, such as you know, MariaDB. That's, that's what I mean by MySQL-like. Um, so Backdrop CMS already did this. It wasn't that hard. Uh, but we have to ask ourselves the question is, is when MySQL and, and Maria or, or the other forks start really branching in, in features, what will happen then in, in terms of, of how we support things? And we'll, we'll probably be in a similar situation. The next benefit of, of removing from core is that Contrib really doesn't have the same constraints as core. I mean, we can rewrite everything. We can extend classes, and, and Drupal 8 gives us this power. Specifically, uh, CHX, uh, um, Krell, they worked on issue to, to basically give us a mechanism for overriding storage classes. So we can, we can rewrite or we can extend the cache storage, the entity storage, the field storage, all the storage, and, and get rid of or redo the way that entities are saving things. And you know, all the contrib drivers are going to have to do this to some extent. Oracle, SQL Server, MongoDB specifically. And I think it's, it, it probably is increasing our, our burden on security just because we're, we're rewriting subsystems of Drupal. And, and we're just kind of, we might be changing the way things are behaving. But this is possible. We, we love Alter. You know, we love to do this. <laughs> I love to do it. Does everyone else love rewriting things? Extending classes? I like it. I've, I've done it I, in some other cases. Um, the installer, we could look at making it better. I mean, we might be hacking the installer. Um, I don't think we should do it, but um, again, some of the reasons why we have our transaction problems is because of the Drupal installation. Uh, lastly, um, we don't need to test all of Drupal if it's in contrib. And we can focus on just testing what we need to. We can you know, basically storage only tests. Uh, take a set of queries and shove it through all the methods uh, that we're trying to. So to emulate things like um, the, the, the serial fields being set um, in a certain way. To emulate Drupal sending an array when in, we should be expecting a string on our, on, in our column definition. And, and this is very similar to how Doctrine's DBAL ha, um, unit tests and you know, if you're not aware of, of that project, it, it, it has unit tests for both MySQL and Postgres and SQLite, and it runs about 30 minutes for, for all those tests, and it does MySQL about three times and Postgres about three times for various versions. 
so uh, the these tests are going to require infrastructure, and if you're we're just in contrib, we really need to have testing infrastructure uh, available to us to in order to test these things. Uh, maybe that means going to uh, GitHub and then and, and, and working with Travis CI. So uh, just a risk of of going down some risks of moving into contrib is is we're playing catch up and. Removing from core isn't going to change that. It is kind of difficult to change core. That's that's up for debate. Um, the whole idea that we're supporting querying against tables that don't exist is weird. Um, it's kind of hard to change our our complete. You know, just start rethinking our storage. Doing that. Um, I mean, that, that would take a lot of work. Uh, in addition to maintaining a contrib driver. Um, yeah, again, we have to work around this and decrease performance. Um, we run into the content entity database storage systems where um, issue where you know when you update in PostgreSQL when you update a primary key field or or, or sorry just a, a sequence field you're, you you want to set default SQL the SQL default type and the way you do that in PHP is different from the MySQL. PHP driver and the PostgreSQL driver, so we have you know certain PHP issues, um, and again we might run into the same things in MySQL with MySQL later on. Uh, yeah, we're playing catch up, so we're still going to be playing catch up, and um, we're just going to have to make more workarounds and possibly decrease performance even more. So if if you were using PostgreSQL in core. Or sorry, as a as a user, would you still use it if it was in contrib? I don't know. <laughs> um, it's going to be more difficult to introduce things like the JSON schema type, and we're going to have to ha cooperate with a lot of contrib developers directly, uh, as they'll have to write. If the, if you wanted to have JSON storage and have a, a JSON field type. Um, you would have to code around the case where you install that on MySQL if you wanted to be a good contrib developer. I don't like installing, having my module fail when it's used on in different situations. But um, yeah, you know things like PostGIS. You know it's going to be difficult to implement those things in contrib. I, in in my opinion, um, as we you know we we don't have we're not in core and we we can't provide fallbacks for other for other drivers. But you know we could probably get that into contrib a lot easier. Um, and lastly, you know, removing from core would further marginalize the PostgreSQL user base, however s small uh, it is. Um, I think you know we don't see many PostgreSQL users because the experience of using PostgreSQL is not great. You know, I, I wouldn't want to use a driver that. That uh, has these issues, so I probably wouldn't install Drupal on PostgreSQL, and and we see that again and again as PostgreSQL enthusiasts try install Drupal because it's supported, find out that it's really it's broken in many cases, and then just stop using you know stop using PostgreSQL for that project and use MySQL. So this is discouraging. Um, for users, it's discouraging for for people who work on the issues. I I asked, uh, you know, where I was working on a core issue, and I I asked a PostgreSQL user friend of mine to review, and he got frustrated with the whole process and used some language that I can't repeat. Um, that's that was kind of disappointing to hear from him actually. Um, so it's it's difficult to to regain trust and rebuild confidence once it has been lost. Um, you know, just from a consumer standpoint. You, you usually, if you have a bad experience at a restaurant, you probably don't go there again. So that's all that's left are altruists and dabblers, and that's that's really not gonna. You're really not gonna see any. any there's no really need for Postgres in, uh, in Drupal in that case. Um, but if we want to do it, how do we get there? Well, one. Again, it's pretty easy to remove PostgreSQL support. Um, we have the patch, but I would also like to see some responsibility taken for our failure of 
not supporting Postgres. And maybe a blog post or something from the Drupal Association saying, hey, here's the situation. We don't want to lead you into false pretenses. Here's what we're doing. We're going to move it into contrib and possibly help the contrib maintainers or of any database system um, with infrastructure and, and testing. And then I think we, we should keep the dialogue open for Drupal 9 in case as we look at database abstraction and our database abstraction layer and how we're improving it and how we're improving our storage um, for, for ideas. And that, that leads me to the, the not so to, to beyond. Um, uh, there's been one proposal of keeping the database agnostic driver for, for tests and making it more strict. And, uh, and then uh, basically, I, I think CHX came up with this proposal and then, then having more performance drivers do specific things uh, for SQLite, Postgres SQL, probably not SQLite. I, you know. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what you can do there. Maybe you can pair it off with some other driver um, of some sort. Uh, and then also for MySQL, we probably could do it, would want to do it for, for Kona. And uh, so this really takes into this approach, was, I think we first discussed uh, right after DrupalCon Austin in, in this year. And it, it's, it's based on the, our current functional QA approach. So you know, we have our simple tests and we run them, run them against a database agnostic driver. And that's how we do our, our thing. So this would be more code to maintain. Um, but it does fit the criteria of having, you know, of, of prioritizing our database drivers if, if we're going to do that. Uh, there's, a, there's a session about this very thing tomorrow in this room at 1 about the future of Drupal functional testing. So I think the, when we discuss how we're, how we're going to, how we're going to proceed, with, you know, with this approach, it really depends on our, how we're going to proceed with testing in general. Um, uh, lastly, we could switch to Doctrine slash DBAL. Um, they support more than just those three drivers. They support Oracle, although they only have tests for MySQL, Postgres, SQL, and SQLite. Um, DBAL has code that's technically discouraged um, a lot of our patches um, for doing workarounds revolve usually at first go into string replaces and regex, and we, we discourage that, although that's up for debate because a lot of uh, drivers do that uh, outside Drupal. Um, and in our, in, in our defense, our database abstraction layer has some things that are kind of nice, the transaction system, the storage uh, abstraction. So we, maybe a, another approach would be a, to take doctrine, uh, doctrine's kind of setup and split all of our drivers away from core or have you know, Drupal slash DBAL and then have just a specific team working on database abstraction. Um, you know, this, again, this is probably not for 8.1, um, we have to solve other issues like Composer. <laughs> um, I think this, this uh, has some, you know, again, we have to look at what we're doing for testing for that. Um, in any case, I think, you know, re go, go back in, the future of PostgreSQL rests in that it must be prioritized or else history will repeat itself. We need testing infrastructure. We need to be a little less selfish about our patches and taking other systems for a spin, and that that's not just for Postgres. And we need to make our database abstraction layer and storage abstraction layer more maintainable. And so, in my opinion, if I think we're on the right track, we have the initiative set up to to improve our testing infrastructure. Um, if we are prioritizing uh, Postgres SQL, then then that meets my criteria, and I think it, we should keep it in core. But if we don't prioritize it, then by all means, let's let's get it. Let's let's remove it. We you know, if, if we're not going to prioritize it, let's get it out. Um, so, with that, I'd like to kind of open the conversation up 
and in case we want to talk about um, questions about PostgreSQL currently or uh, the future of database abstraction, if you want to you know, talk about a, what we can do in our storage um, in our storage layer. And if you are not busy, you can fill out the session evaluation while you're at it. Yes, please use the microphone. So first, first a couple of uh, comments and then maybe a question. Um, comment uh, first in, in Drupal 7, you know, we, we talked about the dismal state of the Postgres driver. It is actually mostly usable with a few patches. Um, I'm one of those crazy people who has production sites, you know, running, you know, high traffic sites running on Postgres and running quite well. I've got one site in particular that's got over 20,000 nodes and it runs really, really well on Postgres. So don't, don't think because it's not perfect and because, you know, the Postgres driver has second, certainly been a second class citizen that it's not possible to run on Postgres at all. It, it is. Um, the second comment is, is with regards to testing, I'll give you a, a preview of some of the things Jeremy's going to be talking about tomorrow. don't want to give away all the secrets, but we have d done a lot of work over the past three or four months to revamp the, the testing infrastructure. I, I'm one of the people who signed up and said, hey, I want to make sure that Postgres runs better, and so got, got sucked into the, in, into the test bot world and learning things I, I never thought I was going to get into, but, uh, but, you know, we, but my point there is that the only way we're going to be able to know what's the right path, whether to, to, to improve it in core or take it out of core, is to measure. To have a measurement of what's failing and what's not failing, and, and that comes back to testing. So testing is obviously an important part of that. Um, so uh, I guess my question is, is a question to everybody in the room. Who else is willing to step up and, and, and help do testing, help you know, get, get some of these issues fixed so that we can get them committed? Um, or, or is everybody consigned to the fact that it's always going to be a second-class citizen? So I'll just I'll just leave that out there for you to think about. I don't need to. So the yeah, question is: uh, Is anybody willing to in this room, even with the limited number of people we have in this room, um, willing to to do a little bit more effort um, in their core development and uh, take Postgres SQL for a spin, work on some issues and patches, um, and just in general. You know whether we should be treating Postgres SQL as a second-class citizen, and I'll I'll start. I think that if with the improvements that we're making, it, we probably aren't going to be treating Postgres SQL and SQLite as second second-class citizens. And if we think about the future, we could probably start thinking about all of the database management systems as as equal um, to, to the to some extent. You want to? Can you uh, step up to the mic, please? And and make sure I'm not. I, I wasn't sure if the mic picked up everything that you had to say. Cause I, I mean, I heard it, but I'm not sure if the mic picked it up. I just wanted to say oh, that sorry. SQLite is a requirement for Drupal 8. We can't run tests without SQLite, uh, so it's a first class citizen. Postgre is a uh, questionable, actually. Uh, so I think uh, the actually what n needs the uh, st describe the state it's uh, there's no features or profit that Postgre could provide. Uh, most of th there's no big crowd around because f people doesn't understand the re the features, the profits, the what Postgre could get, could bring. Also, Postgre has an object model, so it's a plus one for contrib, because we could override in Drupal 8 a lot of storage backends to make them really fast for on Postgre. So. Uh and so I, I, I'd like to hear a propo any proposal how we can uh, allow a storage driver uh, that supports just simple operations in core uh, to provide altering of controllers at least. Providing altering of Control. Uh, Can you repeat uh, that controls. One? You could save entity by uh, using 
override its storage controller uh, to re reusing the storage model of Postgre. You can uh, make a clone of uh, records. <laughs> so uh, it's a different storage model yeah. for entity. It Right. To, to summarize um, what, what you said, the first thing you mentioned was that there is little value uh, to having Postgres SQL in, in core right now. And the reason why is that one SQLite, we depend a lot heavier on SQLite, so it has value to core developers. Um, I think, you know, just in terms of core development, that's that's true right now. We, we don't have much value for it other than being, a, as I said, a litmus test of what's possible. Um, but I think we we could have value in, in Postgres SQL. But again, you said you, know, you you think that it should be in contrib so we can get that value first and then as we go. And I think that's perfectly a, a valid scenario. Um, the second thing you said was is that one of those values, I think is what you're saying, one of the values is to to use post is to be able to use Postgres SQL um, as a document storage in a document storage model. Um, I think uh, actually I was talking with uh, Damien Turn, so I can't pronounce his name, <laughs> um, uh, with Commerce guys, and he was mentioning that he wants to work this week on on trying to, to use Postgres SQL as a as a doc, in a kind of a document storage model um, by supporting the JSON. This week, yes, I yeah, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> he um, uh, maybe he just wants to, to play around and and look at the possibilities. Um, if you're not familiar, if we supported the, you know, if we had a, a table that stores in JSON, uh, we could do things like storing the entity, you know, in JSON, and then querying the properties of that JSON object. I think maybe, I I'm not. To, to experience with, with doing queries on and with the JSON type in, in Postgres SQL 9.1, I think, or 9.2. But uh, yeah, it, it, that has a lot of value um, as a end user if, if we were to keep supporting that. And it's a little harder to get that support and contrib, in, in my opinion. And last one thing. I want to mention it's a Postgre community we um, looks interconnected from them <laughs> uh, they very open and uh, wish to help Drupal to evolve driver and storage and the, the, I mean the conference was some days ago <laughs> uh, so they said that the Drupal should use object model and they wish to help, uh, so it's another resource and another value. So, so you, you were talking with the with the Postgres SQL community um, recently, and they were suggesting that we switch our whole storage model to to being uh, document object, uh, the document object model. Um, it has its advantages. It also has its disadvantages as it's denormalized, but. Um, and the other thing you, you mentioned was was that the the community was offering to help us in the Drupal community accomplish that. Uh, so that that is a a, a really cool proposal because you know in the past we you know we you know some of the comments that um, some core developers have had is that where is the Postgres SQL users? Why aren't they in the issues? Um, and so it would be really awesome to see and have that discussion and and in in the issue queue about about ways we can improve Drupal for for the you know in the, as we start changing or you know as we start thinking about Drupal nine I th I think that would be the appropriate discussion there or or how we could do it in contrib I think it would take it'd be a really big module <laughs> in contrib to do that. So you're thinking about. You know, have a, you know, to start with maybe having the, keeping the the core driver as is, and then and then working on a a control. I think that's great. Is anybody else interested in that? One other comment I wanted to make about uh, 
about the, uh, one of the, the pros of, of not splitting, uh, you know, the, the Postgres driver off into contrib that I got thinking about was other third-party modules. One of the problems I have had with, uh, with Drupal on Postgres is, is not necessarily with core, but there are a lot of third-party modules that, uh, that obvi obviously don't care about anything but, but MySQL, and I'm afraid that if we split the driver off into a contrib module, that makes other modules say, oh, I don't have to worry about it anymore. It's not in core. That's not really a, you know, if, if I write a SQL query that doesn't work on Postgres, I don't have to worry about that because Postgres isn't in core anymore, and that's, that's one thing we should also think about. Right, so the, yeah, the fear, there's a fear that if we remove it from core, it's not going to receive the same attention from other contrib drivers, and I'll counter that uh, with examples of, from the contrib space. We have MongoDB driver, we have a SQL server driver, and contrib is still open to supporting those types of uh, of, of scenarios, uh, the database systems. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to depend on the contrib developer. You know, if, if you're a, an altruist and developer, you're going to say, yeah, that's great. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll try and, and support it and, and do my best. Um, but some people will forget. I mean, I think that's, that's, I mean, that's how it is for other contrib drivers. So I think there's an, I mean, an easy answer to making a first-class citizen, right, which is that the tests run on all the supported database backends and you don't get patches committed if there's failures on any of those. I mean, that's, unfortunately, I mean, not having had the infrastructure has been, you know, preventing that. I think, I think in a way, it, it's sort of like, unfortunately, it would have been an easy technical solution, especially if it had been implemented a while ago and we had it through the whole cycle. Um, but the same thing with contrib, like if you, turn on test pod for contrib and all the patches are tested against all the database drivers, which should be the default, then why, it would get a lot better. I mean, as a contrib author, I've certainly included stuff that for whatever reason broke on Postgres, you know, even for a trivial reason, it's just, yeah, I'd, I'm not gonna test every single patch locally on Postgres or even test my modules if that's not, the, you know, not the stack I actually deploy on. Um, so it'd be nice just to have that automated feedback and I think that would, Dramatically improve the quality of, of support. Yeah. So, so I, I don't think it's. I, I guess for me it looks. I mean the, the hard part is that we're in a bit of a hole until we could get to the point where every it passed on, all those, all the tests pass on all those drivers and and that's, and that's sort of the hard part. It, if we got there, we would I think we would be it would be easier to maintain. There'd be relatively little friction maintaining it in the long run once we got to it being supported on all and tested on all for every patch before it went in. I think, I think the mic picked it, all of that, that one up, so. Um, yeah, I, I think that the test, having a testing infrastructure available for, for, for all database systems is, is gonna be really important going forward. It, um, just as a, just for, for, for all the other contrib drivers as well. Um, yeah, on that, that point, I think that is one of the first steps to getting these other databases supported. And I know there is some core contributors that want it to work on these other databases. Because I was talking to Sun, he was talking about having it work on other databases. So there's people in core that are interested in supporting them. I think once we get that test infrastructure there, there's core developers that want to see it happen. Yeah, so yeah, there there is support for using and being able to test um, against all database systems. So yeah, I, I think the 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 important thing right now is getting that testing infrastructure finished, and at least we have uh, right now we we can see what else is failing, and it's fairly close to Drupal seven. There's some some critical issues you probably want to either patch out, you know, as Drupal is released. So I, th I think we can s continue supporting, especially if we get the transaction issue committed, which it, it probably will be. It's RTBC, so. <laughs> It'd be great if, it, if it's before beta, but uh, yeah. Uh, so maybe a show of hands, uh, what do people think about keeping PostgreSQL in core for Drupal 8, at least for 
Oh, that's a lot of hands. <laughs> Maybe our, our population is skewed. I don't know. Um, <laughs> if we, you know, you know so the, anybody reviewing this video could, you know, you know, you'd probably take that into your account. But uh, the majority of the room says we should keep it in core. Um, again, 8.1. Maybe if 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 we're seeing that we're not really making progress, maybe we remove it in 8.1 or 8.2. Uh, probably safer for 8.2, as I th think migrate comes in at 8.1, if I recall correctly. Or some yeah. You know, the other issue, um, all our migrate stuff is probably broken. <laughs> That's another big thing. Uh, I guess that's it. Um, thank you. I'll uh, try and get the slides up. Um, if you want to read all the blog posts, there's a, a references slide with links um, in, in the last page here. But I'm not going to bore you with uh, bibliography.